Several tool manufacturers make high output batteries that are supposed to make 50% more power and run cooler. The question is, are they just taking your money or can they deliver on this promise? In the first test, we'll compare regular and high performance batteries in the chainsaw. Then we'll compare performance using a circular saw. We'll see which offers the best speed in an air blower. Finally, we'll look inside the batteries to see if they're all the same. Let's compare two Ryobi 4 amp hour batteries. One is a high output and the other is not. And the regular Ryobi One Plus is made in China. Ryobi claims their high output battery makes 30% more power and runs cooler. We're gonna test that. The high output battery costs $85 or $35 more than the regular. I bought two batteries each just in case it caused damage to one of the batteries during testing. Battery sales made in China with further processing in Vietnam. The shape, size, and design of the battery cases looks the same. And the standard Ryobi battery weighs 703 grams and the high performance weighs 25 grams more at 728. The regular Ryobi battery claims to make 72 watt hours and the high output 74. In a recent video, I tested compact chainsaws. Chainsaws drain batteries very quickly, which makes it a perfect tool for the test. The chainsaw dyno will measure the amount of downward force it takes to stall the saw. I'll place a 10 pound weight on top of the tester and it's right at 10 pounds. Both batteries are fully charged. Testing the regular battery first. And Aerobi makes a lot of torque but doesn't offer a lot of chain speed. 46 pounds of downward force to stop the chain on the first attempt. And Aerobi performed the same on the second attempt at 46 pounds. And it's three in a row at 46 pounds on a third attempt. Testing the high performance battery. And the high performance battery came to a stop at 46 pounds in the first attempt. And the high performance battery dropped off a little to 45 pounds on the second. And it's 45 pounds on the third attempt, so the regular battery actually performed a little better. The batteries are fully charged. So let's test the cutting speed cutting through pressure treated 4x4s with 10 pounds on the bar. And the Roby has a pretty slow chain speed, but it made the cut with the regular battery at 6.79 seconds on the first attempt. And the regular battery lost a little speed on the second attempt, making the cut in 6.94 seconds. And the third pass is about the same as the first two at 6.89 seconds. So very consistent results at 6.87 seconds on average. Let's see if the high performance battery can deliver better results. And the high performance battery made the slowest cut yet in 7.35 seconds or about a half a second slower than the regular battery. And the high performance battery did better on the second cut at 6.54 seconds. And the third cut is just under seven seconds for a three cut average of 6.96 seconds. So the regular battery is just a little faster. I just pulled the regular battery out of the freezer. And the regular battery is really struggling and the saw stalled three different times, finally finishing the cut in 15.72 seconds on the first attempt. And the regular battery has warmed up just a little but it stalled two more times on the second cut. 12.47 seconds or three seconds faster. And the regular battery has warmed up quite a bit and made the third cut in 9.22 seconds. And the high performance battery is a lot better at 9.43 seconds on the first attempt and the saw never stalled. And the high performance battery performed about the same on the second attempt at 9.53 seconds and never stalled during the cut. And the third pass is the fastest of the three at 9.38 seconds. So the high performance battery seemed less affected by the cold temperature compared to the regular battery. I compared the battery shot vacs a while back and I kept the Ryobi for this test. The airspeed meter is attached to the suction hose, so let's compare the airspeed and runtime beginning with the standard battery. And the standard battery is at 23.5 miles per hour at the start of the test. It's up a little to 23.6 at minute two, 23.6 at minute four, and it's still at 23.6 at minute six. And it's down just a little to 23.4 at minute eight. Once again, it's down some to 23.3 at minute 10. And it's down quite a bit to 22.75 at minute 12. Down again to 22.42 at 14 minutes. And the standard battery is finished just short of 16 minutes. And the battery is at 111 degrees. And the high performance battery is moving a lot more air than the standard battery at the start of the test at 25.4 miles per hour. Two minutes into the test, it's down to 24.9. At minute four, the high output battery is moving about the same amount as the standard battery at 23.6, down to 23.4 at minute six. And the high performance battery is really dropping off by minute eight at 22.9. It's down some more to 22.8 at minute 10. And it's down again to 22.3 at 12. And it's a 22.02 at minute 14. And the high performance battery lasted just over 16 and a half minutes. The high output battery is five degrees cooler at 106.4. So the high performance battery started off very strong but dropped to the same level as the standard battery by minute four. From minute four to minute 15, almost 70% of the total runtime, the standard battery actually outperformed a high performance battery. I did not expect that. Let's see how the batteries perform when they're extremely cold at around zero degrees Fahrenheit. And the standard Ryobi is really struggling at 19 miles per hour. Two minutes into the test, the batteries are warming up and the airspeed is increasing to 21.8. Up again to 22.2 by minute four. And it's holding around 22.4 at minute six and at minute eight. And it's up again to 22.6 at minute 10 and 12. 
And a standard battery is out of juice at about 15 and a half minutes. And a battery temperature is at 82.5. And a cold high performance battery started off a little bit stronger at 19.8 miles per hour. And it's still performing better than the standard battery at 22.5 at minute two. And it's at 22.6 at minute four and up again at 23 at minute six. And it's holding very close to 23.4 from minute eight all the way through 12. And a high performance battery is down to 22.6 at minute 16. And a high performance battery outlasted the regular battery by about a minute and a half. It's also a little bit warmer at 88.6 degrees. The performance for both batteries improved as they warmed up. When the batteries are extremely cold, the high performance battery consistently outperformed the standard battery throughout the entire test. So the standard battery performed better at around 70 degrees and the high performance did better when starting out below freezing. A quick look inside the battery case and each of the two battery packs uses a total of 10 18650 cells. I went ahead and bought two batteries, but if you buy just one, the price is $100 per battery for this Milwaukee M18 XC 3.0. The Milwaukee lineup has three different levels of battery performance. HD batteries are your larger amp hour batteries, but if you're looking at just a 3 amp hour battery, there's CP and XC. It claims to have up to 20% more power, up to 40% more runtime. The Milwaukee M18 XC 3.0 is made in Mexico. At a price of $119 or $20 more than the XC 3.0 is this M18 Red Lithium High Output CP 3.0. It claims to make 50% more power and runs cooler. Looking at this diagram, one might interpret that the CP has 50% more power than the XC. However, if you read the fine print, it's comparing itself against the regular CP and not against the XC. It claims to have XC power in a compact size. I went ahead and bought two batteries just in case I damaged one of them during the testing. And the high output CP 3.0 is made in China. So the question is, is this high output CP 3.0 worth $20 more than the XC? I measured the length, width, and height of both batteries. While the high output is a little bit shorter, it's also longer and wider. And the Milwaukee XC weighs 713 grams and the high output battery is 121 grams lighter at 592. An air blower uses a lot of juice and it's the perfect tool to compare batteries. I'll use an airspeed meter with a pitot tube to keep track of the airspeed throughout the test. We'll keep track of the airspeed using feet per minute. Both batteries are fully charged and very close to 20.7 volts. I inserted a temperature probe inside of one of the battery's vents and is starting off at 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Testing the high output battery first. And high output battery is at 8,352 feet per minute at the start of the test. Down a little to 8,318 at minute one. It's still about the same speed at minute two, and it's down quite a bit to 8,164 at minute three. A pretty big drop at minute four at 7,930. 7,770 at minute five. Another big drop at minute six at 7,446. And the battery's finished at six minutes and 22 seconds, and the battery is very hot at 143 degrees Fahrenheit. And the XC battery started out at 8,329 feet per minute, which is a little bit slower than the high output battery. 8,450 at minute one is faster than the high output. A small drop off to 8,405 at minute two and down to 8,196 at minute three. And it's about 100 faster than the high output at minute four. A small drop to 7,927 at minute five. A big drop to 7,006 at minute six. And the battery is used up at six minutes and 22 seconds and it's about 30 degrees cooler at 109 degrees. The blue line is for the Milwaukee XC 3.0 and it outperformed the high performance battery for the first five minutes, but it dropped off near the end of the test. The XC also remained a lot cooler than the high performance battery. The battery temperature is very close to zero degrees Fahrenheit and the high output battery is 900 feet per minute slower than the start of the test at 7,468 and is gaining speed after a minute, 7,990, 8,042 at minute two and stayed about the same at minute three and four. And the high output battery is losing speed at minute five and it's down to 7,586 at minute six. And the battery is out of juice at 6 minutes and 39 seconds and is pretty hot around 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Milwaukee XC is 300 feet per minute slower than the high output at 7,163. It's gaining speed and now it's at 7,561 at minute 1. And it's up some to 7,782 at minute 2. Up again to 7,806 at minute 3. Still gaining at minute 4 at 7,913. And it's losing speed at minute 5 at 7,744 and at minute 6, 7,570. And the battery gave up at very close to 7 minutes or about 21 seconds longer than the high performance battery. It's also around 40 degrees cooler at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get the knockoff battery in the XC 8.0 for right now and we'll come back to it later in the video. And the high performance battery performed a lot better than the XC when it was cold. It started off stronger and remained on top throughout the entire test.
And the XC3.0 uses 10 18650 cells. And the high performance battery uses five of the much larger 21700 cells. Each of the 21700 cells has very close to twice the capacity as one 18650 cell. Cobalt has two versions of their four amp hour battery. The first version costs $60 and the second, the high output version costs $70. Both batteries are made in China. The ultimate output battery claims to be a compact battery. It's not as tall, but it is longer and wider and is five cubic inches larger. And a Cobalt extended runtime weighs 789 grams and the ultimate output weighs 65 grams less at 724. Testing the extended run battery first. And the Cobalt stalled at 22 pounds of downward force on the first attempt. And the Cobalt performed very close to the same on the second attempt at 23 pounds. So about 22.5 pounds on average. And the ultimate output ran out of steam at 23 pounds on the first attempt. And the ultimate output performed about the same on the second attempt at 23 pounds. So the ultimate output really didn't do much to improve the performance of the saw. Let's test the cutting speed of the Cobalt with 10 pounds of weight on the bar. And the extended run battery made the first cut in 3.59 seconds. 3.69 seconds on the second attempt for the extended run battery. And it's 3.64 seconds on the third cut for a three cut average of 3.64 seconds. And the ultimate output made the first cut in 3.49 seconds. And the second cut is just a little slower than the first at 3.69 seconds. And it's 3.69 seconds on the third cut for a three cut average of 3.62 seconds. So the ultimate output technically won by two one hundredths of a second, but it was extremely close. I just pulled the regular battery out of the freezer and the battery is just too cold to power up the chainsaw and it's stalling. Let's see if the ultimate output can perform better when it's cold. And the ultimate output battery is performing a lot better than the regular battery, but the saw is extremely underpowered and it's stalling out. After supporting some of the weight on the bar, the cobalt finally made the cut in 23.5 seconds. So let's compare the battery drain curve using a fully charged battery beginning with the extended run battery. With a five amp hour load applied, the battery started off at 23.66 volts. It's down to 23.83 at five minutes. And it's down to 22.21 at 10 minutes. And the voltage is at 21.71 at 15, and it's down to 21.29 at minute 20. At 25 minutes, the battery's at 20.99, 20.74 at 30 minutes, and 20.44 at 35. And it's down to 20.11 at 40 minutes. And the test will be stopped at 18 volts to protect the battery, and it's over at 45 minutes. So the extended performance battery made 3.72 amp hours and 77.4 watt hours. And the ultimate output started out higher under load at just over 24 volts. And it's doing 7 tenths of a volt better at 5 minutes at 23.51 volts. And it's down to 22.91 at 10 minutes. Down again to 22.33 at 15 and 21.77 at 20 minutes. And the two batteries performed about the same at 25 minutes around 21.15 volts. At 30 minutes, the voltage is at 20.62, which is lower than the standard battery. And it's falling fast down to around 20.1 at 35 minutes. And the test is over at 42 and a half minutes, which is two and a half minutes less compared to the extended performance battery. 3.5 amp hours and 73.6 watt hours. So the standard battery made about four watt hours more compared to the ultimate output. Taking a closer look, the high output battery is represented by the red line. And the ultimate output maintained a higher voltage for a little a little over 25 minutes and then fell below the standard battery for the remainder of the test. And the extended run Cobalt uses 12 High Star brand 18650 cells. Just like the Milwaukee High Performance battery, the Cobalt High Performance also uses a 21700 Samsung cell. Rigid also makes two versions of their 4 amp hour battery at a price of $99 for the regular version, comparing that to the max output at $110. It claims to make more power and more runtime. The plastic housing on both batteries looks identical. Both the regular as well as the max output batteries are made in China. And the standard and high output batteries are the same size. The standard battery weighs 682 grams and the max output Output weighs 4 grams more at 686. A while back I tested battery powered circular saws and I kept the rigid on hand for this test. Let's see how quickly the saw can cut through a 1 foot section of 2x4. And the board will be on a set of rollers and will pass under the saw. I'll use 5 pounds of weight and a rope and pulley system to pull the board under the saw. Both batteries are fully charged. Let's test the regular batteries first. And the regular battery made the cut in 3.69 seconds on the first pass. And the regular battery was a little bit faster on the second cut at 3.34 seconds. 3.03 seconds on the third cut for a three cut average of 3.35 seconds for the regular battery. And the max output battery made the fastest cut yet in 2.83 seconds. And the max output is almost as fast on the second attempt at 3.03 seconds. And it's 3.03 seconds on the third pass. So the max output is 12% faster on average than the regular battery. Let's see how the regular battery that's been in the freezer performs. And the battery is just too cold to power up the saw. And the cold max output battery performed about the same as the regular battery and it's just too cold to power up the saw. As a bonus, I thought it'd be very interesting to compare a knockoff 9 amp hour battery versus a red lithium 8.0. 
At a price of only $44, a really good price, is this Milwaukee knockoff 9 amp hour battery. The knockoff is made in China. So is it possible that the $44 knockoff battery is actually better than this genuine Milwaukee battery which costs $229? The knockoff is a 9 amp hour battery, the genuine Milwaukee is 8. Sales made in Korea with further processing in China. And the knockoff Milwaukee isn't quite as long or wide, but it's a little bit taller. And the Milwaukee 8 amp hour battery actually weighs almost 100 grams more than the knockoff. I repeated the same test for the 9 amp hour knockoff battery in the genuine Milwaukee. Milwaukee XC 8.0 using the air blower. And the red line is for the Milwaukee battery and it started off stronger than the knockoff. Around minute four, they were very close to the same speed, but the knockoff battery fell off quickly. And the knockoff ran out of juice at 11 minutes and 48 seconds. And the battery temperature was 90 degrees. And the Milwaukee battery lasted over four minutes longer at 16 minutes and five seconds with a battery temperature of 93.5. I also ran the cold battery test on both batteries. And the red line is for the Milwaukee battery. Both batteries started off slow and needed a few minutes to warm up. However, the Milwaukee battery started off stronger and outperformed the knockoff for the entire test. It also lasted about three and a half minutes longer than the knockoff. The knockoff 9 amp hour battery is on the left and it uses 15 18650 cells. The 8 amp hour Milwaukee uses 10 21700 cells. So this really helps explain why the genuine Milwaukee outperformed the knockoff. So are the high output batteries worth the extra money? I think that really depends. If you work in an environment where the battery packs are gonna be extremely cold, they're probably worth the extra cost. Other than that, I really don't see a whole lot of extra value. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.